Two, five, one. Squeedy, bitty, dee, bitty, two, five, one. Jazz! Hey folks, I'm the Saxophone Oracle, and this week we're talking about two five ones. And I want to start with a common scenario like this one that I came across recently on one of the forums. This person wrote saying, I found out that I have to play an improvised solo over the Miles Davis song called Tune Up uh, for this concert next month, and I've never improvised before. Right? So can someone please tell me how to do this so that I sound good? <laughs> and I don't mean to giggle because it's, it's a serious, it's a legitimate and an understandable question that I hear all the time. The thing is, it's kind of like someone saying, can someone please tell me how to rebuild an automatic transmission in 500 words or less? <laughs> or, you know, like, I need to be fluent in German in two weeks. Bitte helfen, right? It's just, it's kind of ridiculous. So what I'm going to do this week is start by sharing with you the advice that I gave this person. Then we're going to break down and look at exactly what a 251 is. Then I'm going to share with you what everyone else on the internet thinks this person should have done because apparently I had no idea what I was talking about. And I'm going to break down what it is exactly I like about what everyone else is suggesting and what I don't. And then finally, I'm going to show you a scale that guarantees you sound good on any 251, even if you're an absolute beginner. Whenever I'm faced with some sort of predicament in life, whether it's music or anything else, what I try to do is break everything down and distill it to its key elements so that I can try and find the most expeditious solution. So when I heard this person's predicament, I thought immediately three things, right? Concert next month, need to sound good, don't know how to improvise, right? what to do, what to do. What I told this person is that learning to improvise and sounding good over tune-up in one month's time while a worthwhile endeavor is probably biting off a little more that they can chew given that they're absolute beginners. So what I suggested to them is to go online and find various solo transcriptions on the song tune-up and then to piece together a solo using their favorite lines and obviously the most technically executable lines so that they can play a confident solo and sound good at their concert. So to me, problem, solution, right? The question for me wasn't really how do I improvise over tune-up. The question is how do I sound good in one month's time when all I have to look at are these chord changes that I neither know or understand. Now, while that person thanked me for such a thoughtful and elegant solution to their problem, of course the rest of the internet thought I was a complete moron. But Oracle, it's so simple. It's just a series of two fives. So for alto sax, it's two five one in B major. Then you go down a step two five one in A major. Then down a step two five one in G major. So really, if this person knows their B major, A major, G major skills, it's so simple. That's all they need. What's the matter with you? Right? And of course, no one mentions the last four bars where it goes, you know, sharp four. And then anyway. The thing is, the internet is right. That's how 251s are taught, how they've always been taught. That's how they were taught to me. 251 exists in a key center, therefore you can play the major scale and that's all you need. So I want to talk about what I like about that philosophy, what I don't like about it, and what I would propose instead for the beginning improviser. Here we have the C major scale, and what we're going to do is take each note of that scale and build a chord on top of it using only the notes from the key of C major. So C, E, G, B, we have C major 7, D, F, A, C, D minor 7, E, G, B, D, E minor 7, F, A, C, E, F major 7, G, B, D, F is G7, then we have A minor 7, then we have B minor 7 flat 5. This is known as the major diatonic system, and basically it's all the chords that can be created using the notes of the C major scale. In the key of C, if we take the chord starting off of scale degree 2, D, then we have a D minor 7 chord. And then if we take the chord starting off of the 5th scale degree, we have G7, so we have our 2 minor 7, 5, 7, and then we resolve to C major 7. That's our 2, 5, 1 chord progression. And because all of these chords are derived using only the notes of the C major scale, it only makes sense that we teach beginners that they can play the C major scale over the entire 2-5-1 chord progression and they're going to sound just great. The thing is, is they don't really sound just great, or at least I didn't, and I found this really, really frustrating. 
and I didn't understand why. And the reason is because it's not really that simple. It's not that the C major scale sounds terrible. I just don't think it's the best option to present to the beginner improviser because there are lots of notes of that scale that are going to clash over the chords as they go by. And let's face it, if you tell a beginner to use the C major scale over 251, they're probably going to start on C and go up to C and back down to C, right? If you give that chord progression to an experienced improviser and ask them to only use the notes of C major, well then yeah, that's going to sound pretty good. But that's because they're going to outline the chord changes as they go by, or they're going to play bits and pieces of the school, bits and pieces of the scale that outline the harmony. And then they're not really playing the C major scale, are they? But what I like about this teaching philosophy is that it's a really eloquent way of explaining to people that even though you're in a song that has multiple chords, for all intents and purposes, you can be within one specific key center and it offers a suggested set of notes that are going to sound pretty good. But again, you give them to beginner and it's going to sound like someone's more or less meandering up and down the incorrect scale. What I like to propose to beginners is an even simpler scale, and that scale is the pentatonic scale. And the pentatonic scale is a five note scale. If you're not familiar, I highly encourage you to check out this video over here. It's a video I made introducing the pentatonic scale to beginners and explaining why they want to have this in their bag of tricks. So staying in the key of C, I'm not proposing the C major pentatonic scale. What I'd propose is the scale starting off of the fifth scale degree, G. So G major pentatonic scale, G, A, B, D, and E. And I like this scale for several reasons. First of all, all the notes are gonna sound great and consonant over the two chord, the D minor seven. Second of all, not only are all these notes gonna sound good over the five chord, but this scale is also gonna perfectly outline the ever important resolution of five one, G seven going to C major. Third reason I like it is that all the notes are consonant over the one chord. In fact, they omit the two notes that can possibly sound dissonant, which are the root and the fourth of the chord. And the fourth reason that I like this scale is because a pentatonic scale has a much more interesting intervallic structure than your typical major scale, which moves in stepwise motion. So the fact that it's a five note scale in and of itself is going to force the more the less experienced improviser to come up with more interesting sounding lines. Now I'm going to demonstrate this for everyone. What I've done is downloaded a backing track of the 251 chord progression going through all 12 keys. And for each key center, I'm only going to use the corresponding pentatonic scale. And I'm also going to make a little cheat sheet for everyone that lays out which pentatonic scale to play over which 251 chord progression, which you can download in PDF format for free by visiting my website www.thesaxophoneoracle.com. Thank you. 
at the end of the day, if you're a beginning improviser, you really have to be at peace with the reality that you're probably not going to sound very good. Or certainly you're not going to sound as good as you would like. And that's okay. That's completely normal. It's like that for each and every one of us. But if you take this approach that I'm suggesting to the 2-5-1 chord progression, you can at least be confident in knowing that you won't play any wrong notes and that the shape of your lines are going to sound pretty darn interesting. And then sure, as you get better, as you gain more confidence, then yeah, experiment with all kinds of other notes, different approaches. I'm the Saxophone Oracle. I hope you found this week's video educational, entertaining, informative. As always, thank you so much for continuing to watch. If you haven't done so, please consider subscribing. Send me a like, leave a comment. All these little things go a long way in making it easier for others to find my content on YouTube. I wish you a great week. Happy practicing. See you next Tuesday. Thank you.